It is a great pleasure to be a part of Transform 2012. And I've got a lot of ground to cover in a very little time. So those that want to query me later or connect through Twitter, it's um, at Dr. Reed Tuxen. That's D-R-R-E-E-D-T-U-C-K-S-O-N. To help you to think about how we're thinking about transforming the care delivery system, I need to give you a quick insight into what we're up to at United Health Group and what our purposes is, what it is that we're trying to achieve. United Health Group is essentially two companies. One, United Healthcare, the largest health insurer in the industry, whose mission is very simple and straightforward, helping people live healthier lives. And our second company is a company called Optum who's uh, the largest health services company in the industry. And their mission is to help make sure that the, that the medical, that the prevention and wellness and medical care systems work better for everyone, very specific to individuals. Well, we know that as we try to make healthcare work better for everyone, and as we try to help people live healthier lives, you know that we're up against some pretty serious challenges. The incidence of chronic disease is, of course, growing. The prevalence of preventable risk factors is overwhelmingly worrisome. And while tobacco may be down a little bit, still 17.3% of the population is still smoking. 400,000 people will die from that this year. You know what's going on in obesity. What you may not know and think about much is the economics of this extraordinary obesity, $344 billion. You know uh, how important it is uh, to get at diabetes, but the increase in diabetes, of course, is astounding, and the economics of that are overwhelming. And then finally, as just one last glimpse, the number of couch potatoes in this country continues to grow and expand. We have some real issues and some real challenges, and if we're gonna get at that, if we're gonna transform, we're gonna need solutions that are comprehensive, that are interconnected, and that are end-to-end -end solutions. We are all about putting the puzzle together and focusing on how can we help each individual adopt personally appropriate health behaviors and lifestyles. We are focused on how to help them make personally appropriate, personally appropriate health and medical care choices and decisions, and then ultimately have all of this roll up into the best possible aggregate health, health outcomes, and uh, affordable access to care for the 75 million people that our company is privileged to touch in one way or another. Well, the essence of what we are about is data. We are very much uh, the company in healthcare that approximates what's going on in other industries outside of healthcare. This is the era of big data, and it's also the era of analytics at the level of scale that can handle big data. And so we have invested hugely in that capacity. We now have one common database that links multiple person-centric engagements together. We have one database that is now comprised of over 70 million member records. We have one database that basically has 500,000 claim records that come into it as one category of information every single month. And it is that data that we then use. The art form in transforming healthcare through data means that you also have to transform the capacity to accept data, aggregate it, and then analyze it. We have always had a pretty robust capacity to take data from consumers, from the delivery system, uh, from, from key healthcare stakeholders, the data generators, and we could use medical claims data, pharmacy data, and laboratory data, put it all together and tell a story about Mrs. Jones. We would know that Mrs. Jones, because of the intersection of all those databases, was a 55-year-old African-American woman with diabetes and congestive heart failure, and we would know that Mrs. Jones did not get certain interventions that she should have gotten. She didn't get her mammogram. And so now we can not only take the information we have about her, take that gap, but then apply it through directed, targeted outreach to help her to close that gap. That was always exciting to us. And so what we've been doing now is building on that by being able to take another, other sets of data 
and bring those into the mix. And so now health risk assessments, health screenings, electronic medical record data, as we just heard in the previous talk, health information exchange data. We can take biometric devices. We can take mobile health apps. We can take information that comes from engaging with people through coaching. And then care management and disease management. And now bringing all of that data together to tell a story. This is very hard to do. It isn't easy to do because when you are trying then to analyze that kind of data and then liquefy it to be able to make it available for choices, you use an extraordinary number of, of, of algorithms, algorithms that are run on this data sometimes monthly, sometimes weekly, sometimes daily to make it really relevant at the moment for the intervention and then make the data available for the choices that individuals must make and to fuel a very patient-specific engagement by the delivery system with the patient. And so that means that we've been advancing with some seriousness the multivariable uh, testing techniques that are necessary to identify preferred individual engagement strategies. In other words, we need to know not only what this information is saying to us, we must be able to analyze it, but then we must be able to give it back to a person based upon a sophisticated understanding of how that person wants to receive that information. And this is the art form to be able to have this as a continuous cycle of learning, a continuous integrated learning system over time. Well, we make that data then available at three different levels of intervention if we're going to solve the problems that we have to solve. Number one, at the most macro level, we do something called America's Health Rankings, which is taking this data and giving America a picture of its overall healthiness based on a state-by-state -state analysis. I hope you'll take the time after this is over to go to www.americashealthrankings.org. That's all one word. My staff hates it when I say www. But because it sounds, makes it sound like an old fogey. I say www. to give you time to get your pencil out so you can write down americashealthrankings.org. And what you will see there is the most robust database that gives you a clear sense of how each state is doing, and more importantly, where the engagement opportunities are to be able to make a difference at the population and then ultimately to stimulate a conversation at the subpopulation level. Second level, we are very focused on identifying the opportunities for engagement at an employer or a healthcare purchaser level, looking at their populations. We have a tool that we call um, the uh, health plan manager, which really takes now real time data and analyzes what's going on in that employer's population to see where their biggest cost trend drivers are to get their attention, but where are the highest priority target areas for their population for intervention. So let me give you just a quick snapshot of what that might look like. We can ask that company, as of this month, what are the cost trends that you are experiencing? In this company, we see that before uh, today versus uh, in previous years, they are seeing a 4.6% increase in their healthcare trend. Why are they seeing that? Well, we can then do what we call a heat map, a heat map that allows us to see all the conditions that are driving or the, all the epidemiological conditions that are being experienced by their population, but given the intensity of the color, which ones are the most important? And here it's clear for this company, it's diabetes. All right, then within that, they have plants in a variety of locations. Which parts of the country specifically is their problem? And here, the issue is in Northeast Wisconsin, a clear differentiator for what's happening for their employee population than someone else. Well, if we go and drill into that area, of those diabetics, are they receiving the right care? 
And so we can analyze in real time basis and give back to that employer a sense of whether or not they are getting hemoglobin A1C3s done, whether they've got a primary care physician, whether the primary care physicians are doing their job. We can also look and see what subpopulation groups have more problems than others. Is it the empty nesters? Is it the older singles? Is it the young marrieds? Is it the young singles? And so now what a company can do is to be much more laser-like in their approach to high priority targets, using their money and resources cost effectively to get at their highest probability targets. And then we're able to use uh, all of this through what we call Spider-Man um, kinds of analytics, which give us the kinds of pictures that we need to do there. Third level, focusing now directly on this individual. Why is it that people don't make the kinds of choices that they need to make? There are lots of reasons why, of course, very specific to each person. Many people are simply paralyzed by fear and anxiety and need to be reached because of that in that way. Other people are not doing what they need to do because health is just not as important as other things. I've got, my life is too complex, I gotta take care of my kids, it's too late for me, it's all fate anyway. Uh, some people don't do the things they need to do because their problems creep up on them gradually. A variety of very personal ways that cause people to not make choices that we wish that they would make and others, by the way, because it's just simply too much information. I, I can't cut through it all. It's just a little bit too complicated. So we've been spending a lot of energy transforming our capacity to understand subcategories of folk. What are the striations, the variations, the categories that kind of give you a sense of what, the ways in which you need to reach out to an individual? Some people are assured actives, for example. Others are overwhelmed. Let me give you an example of overwhelm. Sam, 35-year-old cook, struggled with obesity since childhood, currently taking antihypertensive, antidepressants, and analgesics for back pain. He says, I know I'm overweight. I've always been. But I'm not a joiner. I don't want to be involved with groups. I need interventions that are very personal for me, but I'm not going to be a part of a group. I know I should follow my doctor's advice, but..." My doctor's advice is complicated. I've never understood, and I'm intimidated by them. Uh, that white coat, I'm afraid to answer, to ask questions of the person, and so I don't, really don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. But I do know that I was supposed to get a stress test, but I put it off because you see me at my table on Sunday. I'm trying to make my budget out, and I'm terrified because I don't know how much it's going to cost me, and I don't have one discretionary dime to play around with. And so I'm just going to put it off because I don't understand it. And so we've developed as one intervention of a portfolio of those kind of personal interventions something called Optimize Me. Optimize Me, which is available, uh, and by the way, any of you can actually get it as well, whether you have our insurance or not, but it is a, a, a smartphone-enabled uh, capacity for Apple or Android, and you can go there, and let's say that you put there and you can say, I want to set my weight goal, and this is what my weight goal will be, and I will customize it to my needs, and then I will make that information available to my crowd-sourced team, to my group, my friends and I'll make my progress available. I did that with my biking. I rode my 50 miles the other day that I was supposed to do, and my boys wrote back, you suck. Because <laughs> they did 122. And I had to get back on the bike and ride another, you know, four or five, you know, whatever I could get. That crowdsourced behavior, very important for motivation. Then you can track what you do, and not only track it, but also upload it to things like Fitbit. So now you're starting to connect some of these kinds of devices together, and now you can track that through those mechanisms. But still, Sam was saying, you know, I did all that, but I'm really not making the progress I needed to make. I need to talk to somebody. And so Sam can talk to a coach. And there's a coach that's waiting and available for Sam. And when Sam calls in to that coach to talk about how he's doing, that coach has on his or her screen every piece of information that we know about Sam. So not only can the coach talk about 
hey, let's talk about your exercise program, let's talk about your diet, but also the coach knows, Sam, you didn't get your stress test. And so now I'm gonna talk to you, Sam, about stress tests, and we're gonna help you to overcome that. So that's the kind of capacity that we have to being able to do that. Well, Sam's health plan is one of those that most people are getting these days. It's a plan that are called consumer-driven plans that have financial skin in the game. In fact, these are the fastest growing health plans uh, in the industry. There's financial skin in the game. And so what Sam is now going, if I'm gonna get that stress test, I need to know how much it's gonna cost me. So now we're able to provide a healthcare cost estimator that can connect him either through his, his computer at home or back to his smartphone again, real-time information that gives him a real clear sense of what it's gonna cost him to get a stress test where he lives. Real contracted rates in that person's individual market with pre-adjudicated claims data. This is as tight, as close, as close to the moment and timely as you can possibly get. Sam can then say, okay, I understand what the general cost will be, but I'm gonna choose now the doctor that I wanna to go to to get that cardiovascular engagement. And he can go online now and pick the doctor that he wants, a doctor that is indicated by two stars, whether they, they exist or don't exist. The first, quality. How good is that doctor based upon National Specialty Society industry standards for quality in cardiovascular care. He absolutely now knows whether this doc is a quality doc, and then second, a star for cost effectiveness. And now he understands that this physician will at least give him the best chance for a quality and affordable intervention. And in fact, he can plug in that doctor, and then he can plug in the facility that he's going to, see those costs, and then instantly have a calculation that tells him exactly what this will be for him as he sits at the dinner table. So this is a world now where you have a multitude of interventions. You've got everything from your smartphone, your coach, your social networking. We have all of, we have something called UHC TV where we are able to take the teaching and evidence-based ed education information, plug it into uh, to the person's social networking. When they go on their social networks, they can click in. There's a variety, all of these kinds of things. Uh, gaming technologies, uh, you can do uh, our video, uh, syn synchronous video communication when you're at home and talk to a healthcare professional uh, through that capacity. Um, you see I've got information there around your genetic predisposition with your genetic code. All of these things are now available for the person. And so we are connecting all of that through shared data that flows with and for the person. The last step in all of this is going to be how to translate and make sure that all of this works for human cognition so that people are gonna make the best possible choices for them. And so the transformation that I hope to be able to talk to you about the next time on another 18 minutes, since I'm exactly at 18 minutes, what we want to talk to you about the next time we get to talk to you about transforming is the learning theory, the adult educational modeling that we are working on to be able to ensure that all of that stuff actually gets in here to change behavior. This is an exciting moment of transformation, and we're trying to put all the pieces of that puzzle together. Thank you so much. Um, let me just play the uh, journalist role here for a moment. Um, in the original sort of uh, construction that you had of how you, you aggregate the data, you had all those strips in there of various sources of data. Should there have been a strip that said patient? So the answer is that there is a strip in there called patient, in that that's the patient's assessment of, of care. It is the patient's assessment of health risk assessment. It's the patient saying, here are the things that I'm indicating that are important to me. So that's what that health risk assessment block was. Great question, absolutely. It sounded like what you were saying is somehow the data pops out a Mrs. Jones problem that then you want to create an intervention for. Is that sort of the Precisely. Scenario? Right. Now, there's also the 
maybe somebody should just call Mrs. Jones scenario, right? Right. Uh, how does the system still allow for the possibility of just going directly to the patient and asking simple, straightforward questions about what do you need? Right. So, so the original way that we approached this, as I said, was we could take the, um, the, the medical claims data, the laboratory data, the pharmacy data, and we would know, Mrs. Jones, you didn't get your mammogram. Then what we're able to do is to take that, we call, we first of all send Mrs. Jones a Hallmark card. Mrs. Jones, you didn't get your mammogram. You should get it. We send her a second Hallmark card. You didn't get it. Then somebody picks up the phone, calls Mrs. Jones. I got a letter on my desk right now from Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones says, I didn't go when you sent me the card. I didn't go when you sent me the second card. I didn't go until somebody got on the phone and really hollered at me. Bad news is I have breast cancer. Good news, we caught it early and in time. Thanks to God and Nurse Smith, I'm alive today. How much training goes into that third intervention point? The two Hallmark cards get ignored, but then there's that person that has to call, and they probably don't want to be hollering at Mrs. Jones, <laughs> right? right? They, they, and, and you know, dealing with some of the other issues that have been talked, you know, people are inclined to say, hey, I'm fine, leave me alone, or I'm afraid of this person on the other line. How yeah. do you deal with that? So I probably shouldn't have said hollered at her. I was a, a little dramatic license. The, these are very kindly nurses. Of course. So these are nurses that are doing this work. We have over 2,000 of these people who, who do this kind of work. But the notion is I was trying to build is we have a pre, we're getting very good at understanding who you are on the other end of the phone. Some people knew, do want you to be in their business. Some people want you to be, Sam is like saying, I'm gonna tell you what I'm like and what I don't want and what I do want. So the algorithms that we are getting from these engagements with people is giving us a much more precise way of doing it. But I love your question because the thesis of it is, is the art form of transformation. That we're, you, the one thing we're not doing anymore is, here's our brochure. That, those days are gone. Unless it's a person that says, I only want brochures. If it's my mother, she only wants internet. If it's my son, he's only interested in, 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 in uh, tweeting or, or in, um, uh, um, you know, just the, the notes. But basically what you're saying is you start from the sort of model, the, the sort of general kind of societal outcome, reduce obesity, whatever goal that you have, and you track it all the way through to how we get in touch with individuals. Right. And unless it has that outcome at the other end, this data here is valuable. And, and that's the excitement. Because see, look, we've been at this a long time. Everybody should worry about diabetes. It's getting to be a big problem. Everybody in Seattle needs to worry about diabetes. It's a big problem. Everybody at the local level needs to worry about di No, you need to worry about diabetes. And you would like us to tell you this in the following way. And what you ultimately want is you don't want your health to be ghettoized as health. You want it on your phone in the same way that you're going to get your app when you go to the grocery store to see what the prices are. When you put your barcode scanner to see what the prices are or what the nutritional content is. By the way, I would like to basically be reminded that, oh yeah, I do have that problem with hyperglycemia. And so let's work it all in so it's integrated. Now, you know, I love what you're saying, but I, I'm, I'm terrified that this applies mostly the population of people who are wandering around the Apple store right now, and maybe Mrs. Jones doesn't have a smartphone, doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection, doesn't have the sort of digital sophistication that some of these systems that you're creating seem to require. How do you deal with the Good. gaps in the digital engagement in the population? Well, one of the great things, though, is that that gap is, as you are well aware, very narrow and becoming even more narrow. But at the end of the day, if the person wants to be communicated then through internet, if they want to only be communicated through health coaches calling them, if they only want to be engaged by having a book or what we call healthy notes sent to their home, if you want it in your, when you get your claim, your bill, on the bottom of the bill, it says, by the way, we noticed you ordered cholesterol medicine today. Let's talk about hypercholesterolemia. Whatever way you need it or want it, the point of it is, is that the transformation is healthcare has got to get specific and individual. And the more you can make it with personally relevant data that meets their individual needs the way they want it, then you got a much better chance. We are so far eons away from what we used to have. So you've got to operate on the landline platform, the smartphone platform, the Wi-Fi platform, the Twitter platform, and the walking up to the front door and knocking on the front door platform. All of it, but the, the commonality between all of those various dissemination points is having a common database that's robust enough 
to be relevant to the person in real time and specific to their particular challenges. And as long as you can have a database that connects you through, we're agnostic to the, to the platform. So we don't get all excited about, I showed the mobile app. We like mobile apps. I could have gotten as excited about the gaming technology. I could have gotten, ex we are agnostic to the way you reach the person. The point is getting to the person. World of Diabetes Craft, next. <laughs> I like that. Dr. Tuxin, thank you so much. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.